the repeater tool in Burp Suite is quite convenient for a couple of different scenarios. So first of all, we'll go ahead and start up Burp Suite, make sure that we are proxying the browser through the tool, and we're going to enable interception to look at a couple of different ways to send requests to the repeater tool. So as our demonstration page, we're going to use the user privilege level page inside of Matilde. And I'm going to refresh the page. And that causes Burp Suite to intercept the request. So one way to send request over to the repeater is to just right click inside of a captured request and say send repeater. You can go ahead and release the request at that point. But you may have been testing for a while and gone through several pages and then decide to go back and send some prior request over to the tool as well. So to do that, you can look at your HTTP history and you can find the request that you want to send over from the list and just send it directly from here. You can do it in a few different ways. You can do it directly from the line itself. You can right click down in the request area and you can double click the line and right click inside of the request window. So once you get the request over to the repeater tool, it's useful for primarily two use cases. The first is you want to make sure that the request is repeatable. There are cases where you'll capture a request in the proxy, bring it over to the repeater, replay it, and find out that it doesn't work. Some sites use cross-site request forgery tokens that are only good for exactly one request. And in those cases, just repeating the same request will result in an error. So here we've brought over our original request and we'll hit go to repeat it and we get back a result. To show that there's no difference between a replayed request and the original, we can just compare them. So we'll go over to the compare tool and clear out previous work. I'm going to right click and send the repeated request to the compare and then I'm going to go back over to the proxy and send the original request over to the compare. Excuse me, original response. And so I have the two responses and we'll compare words, sync the views, and then see if there's any differences that are of importance. So just scrolling through quickly doesn't seem to be any differences indicating that we got the same response from the original request as we did from the repeated request. So another use case for the repeater tool is to actually do testing. Now for automated testing, you probably want to send the request over to the intruder and then run your payloads through. But for just quick tests, we can just use the repeater. So we have our request here. And again, if we want to use the compare, we'll clear it out ahead of time. And we'll send our baseline request over. And then we'll mess with the IV field, for example. We'll change uh, the first four characters to zeros. Replay the request. And send the response over to the compare. Compare again and sync views and look for any differences. So let's get it down towards the bottom. We notice that there is a difference. First of all, the initialization vector that we were messing with is, of course, different because we were the ones that changed it. But also, we noticed that this field here called application ID is impacted. Originally, it was A1B2, and after we messed with the first four letters of the initialization vector, it changed to uh, star, another symbol, and B2. So these first four characters in the IV had an impact on the first two letters in the application ID. So that's a quick tour of the repeater tool and I think you'll find it useful in your testing of web applications.